A guerra trouxe miséria, trouxe desemprego, trouxe a fome também. Muitas pessoas morreram por causa da fome. Porque não podiam ir às machambas poderem cultivar, porque não era seguro. As pessoas mudavam de zona em zona a cada dia, porque sempre fugia um conflito. Armies had to eat, elephants were killed, tusks were sold to buy guns. So everything just pretty much got wiped out. When I got here, nothing was known about lions. There had never been any formal research on carnivores. So people had, you know, casual observations about how many lions and where, but we really had no data. I thought I smelled something back there as well. The first thing you want to do is count. You want to know how many and where. Where is everybody? But we had a hell of a time in the beginning actually finding lions in this wilderness. It's mostly roadless. It's long grass habitat, so we worked in the beginning just to be able to see lions. There's a beautiful lion. And then we took it a step further and began to put GPS collars on prides and coalitions, so groups of females, groups of males. And those in turn took us deeper into the story. And what we quickly found is that lions were still being killed. People were setting wire snares in the landscape to catch warthogs and waterbuck and buffalo but they're also, they were catching lions. Lions are bycatch in those traps. Njinga lost his foot in a gin trap in February. And the numbers were showing one in three were either maimed, like losing actual limbs, or killed in these snares. I came here as an ecologist, as a scientist. Start the timer but quickly had to switch gears because when we saw the trends for lions here and other species, we had to intervene. That was the leap that we made as a team. We went from being scientists, purely scientists, just collecting data to intervening and really trying to get the population jump-started. So we'll collar him so we can monitor his progress and keep treating him. So we had to stop illegal hunting. We had to create a refuge for these species to naturally recover. When I started to work here, the situation with the armadillas was dramatic. It was a problem very big. The area was infested with armadillas mechanic and also with caps of ass. And there, it also started to train new fiscals para fazer limpezas ou remover em cabo de aço ou armadilhas mecânicas onde os leões circulavam. The rangers are the ones on the ground and we put technology in their hands, high resolution satellite imagery, and we paired their patrols with GPS data we were getting from the collars. So those satellite collars that are on lions send us positions every few hours. So we know where lions are. We know where the core habitats are. And so we know where to focus strategic patrols. In the first two years, we saw a complete turnaround in the situation. Lion poaching declined by 95%. We haven't had a lion snared in over a year already. And believe me, I look. It's possible to have in every year no animal that in the And this, for us, traduz-se num resultado fantástico. Agora, o que resta é realmente preservar aquilo que nós temos. In the past three years, we've had 13 cubs, and seven of those have been female. And that's the beauty of lions. If you give them the opportunity, they grow. They breed almost every two years. The survival is very high in Gorongosa. There's a lot of food, there's a lot of space. So they've done very well. We understand from the science and the data that we've collected that we could have three times as many lions in this park than we currently have. And so that's a target, that's a goal. And so we use the science and the data to really guide us towards those. What we're trying to do here is heal the ecosystem, put the pieces back together. The 
lines took us straight to the heart of a problem. And once we solved that problem, it laid the ground for all these other species to come back to. It really was just a matter of letting nature do what it does best. And we did that by just taking the human factor out of the situation. So where before humans were having a negative impact on populations by setting snares, by shooting animals, you remove that and you just step back and you let nature take its course. And in a system as robust and resilient as Gorongosa, you can let that happen.